Great day. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, as always, we want to welcome you guys to the podcast. We are super, super excited. Um, We are continuing um, through the acronym of the word SHIFT. And of course, before I move on, if you have not gotten the workbook, The Shift, hop over on Amazon.com and order yours today. You should receive it in about two days. You can also order it on our website at mindingwhatmattersnow.com. Or you can also download the the e-copy of that workbook. You can also go to mindingwhatmattersnow.com forward slash the dash shift and join the community there's a one-time fee it gets you the the ebook and it also gets you access to uh, bonus videos bonus downloadables there's going to be so much other stuff that's in there but it's going to be a lifetime access that you'll have to this platform we are literally um just shifting (laughs) like literally god has come in and blown on this thing and he gave me this workbook it he downloaded and then immediately doors have been opening for us things have been happening things have been moving for us um the shift has actually been being featured in the self-made holiday guide now if you're not familiar with uh brit marin and uh self-made um or or her business brit and co which are online training classes for business owners for moms for entrepreneurs she is absolutely a force to be reckoned with um i found uh, her platform actually through social media about a year about a year now um and at that time uh office uh max office uh, depot was offering a one-year scholarship to her community so within this community is um one-on-one mentorship there are you have place for collaborations there are thousands of women there that help you celebrate the wins you we share our big things our little things we've got follow me friday where you go in and follow there are pitch competitions where um you can enter to be chosen to pitch your business to brit and her board and the members and the coaches there and their cash prizes of like five thousand four thousand three thousand two thousand a thousand dollars that you can use in your business um, for whatever you need uh, to use that money for. There are just so many great opportunities. So if you have not discovered self-made, um, please go over and do that because it is definitely a godsend. I had actually um, applied to be in a pitch earlier this year. I was not chosen to be in the pitch, but because I applied and um, attended an online event, I got in the mail the most beautiful necklace uh, that has the plate a plate that says self-made on it. Um, they um, I have tools that they sent to me from joining um, their uh, platform. I mean, this this thing is just absolutely amazing. As you guys can see, I can't stop talking about it. And we are very honored to be on their holiday within their holiday guide, their 2023 holiday guide. Um, So go over and check out Self Made, but also get on this shift, get in the shift, get in the zone. If you've gotten your workbook and you're looking for some additional guidance, then you're going to want to join the Facebook page. You can find that at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the shift 23. I'm there live every Monday and we're going to be adding some other things there. Again, you can always be in that group. We build that to um, just allow others who um, have joined and will join as this thing continues to grow of the community. So you can discuss, um, you know, the questions and the work because this is work. This is literally work. However, you are worth every moment of this hard work to become who God has already created you to be. So the acronyms that we've covered so far, S is for seeking, H is for honesty, and today we're going to talk about how I is for introspection. Now, introspection's definition is the examination or observation of one's own mental and emotional processes. Now, I know you probably noticed that I put some emphasis on the word own because that's that place that we're going to mind our business. We're going to uh, work on and focus in on our own ability to mentally and emotionally process things, right? How do we process hurts, pains, uh, good events? How do we process them? 
You might think, well, I always process good things well. Well, we don't always, especially if we're in a bad place emotionally and mentally. Good things can be happening all around us and we miss them because we are now so tainted, so hurt, so bitter that we cannot see the good in the things that's happening for us. So we're going to talk about that. Some examples given um, for introspection is journaling, meditation, and self-monitoring. I like to call the self-monitoring basically strategies or um, self-check-ins. So um, I've talked to you guys here before about how I have put in place certain strategies, right? There are certain things that I know have been a struggle for me since the time I was a child. Several of them, most of them put in place by the enemy of our souls because he knows that if we ever figure out exactly who we are and if we ever truly embrace that we are who God says that we are, then we are a force to be reckoned with. And so when, because I will not allow frustration, distractions, and all the other things that he attempts to bring to me, because see, the enemy is not going to stop. So we can't either, right? So I put certain strategies in place. I start to pay attention to things like if I'm eating a lot at night, right? Um, past my bedtime. Um, and sometimes I'm up working and that's okay that I'm snacking at 3 a.m. because I've worked for the last seven hours and that was just my, my, my good, that I'm in that groove, right? But if I find myself eating more than I usually would or having more, more snacks or just whatever it is, then I, I have to pay attention to, okay, what's actually going on in other places? Have I lost my consistency in a particular place or have I allowed my schedule to get so busy that I've not rested or given myself enough time to examine my thoughts and to become balanced mentally and emotionally? So I have checkpoints, right? So that's what that is talking about. Well, um, Sitting alone and reflecting on one's thoughts and feelings or discussing them with a counselor is another uh, definition of introspection, sitting alone. Now that alone, me saying sitting alone made some of you cringe, right? Um, because sometimes for people, for us, for others, it, it's difficult to be alone. That used to be something that was difficult for me. Um, because sometimes because we are physically or we feel like we're physically alone, we believe the lie that we are alone, period. And we start to see a different, we start to reflect on our relationship with God and others differently. When really, in actuality, we're not alone. We are just in a place of stillness, aloneness that may have been chosen by us or by God so that we can get what we need spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and often physically. Romans 12 and 2 says, um, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the well, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Sorry, I stumbled a little bit because I used a different version than what my heart has memorized. So I'm going to read that for you again. It reads as follows. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So what this is in essence saying to us, don't conform to the world. Don't conform to the world's views and their thoughts and what the world is telling you is good for you or what the world is telling you makes you successful. He's saying, but be transformed. Transformed means turned into, transformed into who God created you to be. The, the real reason he uh, put you in this earth. You do this by renewing your mind, that by testing, meaning when you are being tested, when you are having to make a decision of, hey, what's truth and what's not, you can discern what is the will of God and know what is good and acceptable and perfect. Doesn't mean that you're perfect, but it's perfect because it's God's will for you. He, he's the one who makes it perfect. Well, we cannot renew our minds if we resume. Uh, we cannot renew if we, re if we resume after an interruption, give fresh life or strength to. Okay, let me read that again. So <laughs> we cannot renew our minds if we do not resume properly after an interruption. So basically, what does that mean? Sometimes there's an interruption emotionally because mentally because there has been heartbreak or a loss or um, something that broke our hearts or that just really hurt our feelings or maybe things just didn't go the way that we wanted them to. We can't continue to just resume and go back to 
life as it is without proper introspection, without looking at how it truly affected us. Because sometimes we want to just go back and we want to go back to the way things were, not realizing that that thing that we just walked through, not only did it change maybe the relationship and maybe that relationship doesn't exist anymore, but it's also changed the way we view relationships and maybe the way that we review that we view love, right? Um, we cannot get fresh life in or strength or be revived again without introspection. We can't just keep packing it down and pretending that it doesn't exist. We can't replace something that is broken or worn out without first acknowledging that it's broken and worn out, right? Um, I was speaking to someone recently and... Um, I was at a loss a little because it was almost like they expected me to have ESP. And even though God does give us, the Holy Spirit will give us discernment. He will, I pray for my clients. I pray for people that I'm purposefully meeting with so that I can have an understanding of what I'm walking into, what my purpose is in the room. Sometimes my purpose isn't to get, it's to give. And sometimes it is a, a mutual give and get in a situation. However, when we show up and say we want change, we've got to really be willing to look on the inside of us and find the things that we don't like. Because sometimes we're wrong. <laughs> sometimes our view is wrong. Sometimes we have been angry and so hurt by something that someone said or did and that, that we can no longer see that maybe it was just our perspective of what happened. So maybe... Someone said something, and yes, you rightfully got your feelings hurt, or your feelings were rightfully hurt, but we can't see past the hurt to realize that it wasn't intentional. Now, are do people hurt our feelings intentionally? Oh yeah, for sure. But we have to do the work to make sure that what we see is what is truth. Because we can see a thing and it not ever be true. I shared this with you guys before. Um, I'm pretty sure I have. If not, here we are in a transparent moment. I was in the sixth grade uh, going to Largo Middle School, and I was in love with this guy named Jason Blake. <laughs> I loved Jason. He was my first real guy friend that I liked and that I liked to kiss. Um, <laughs> Jason and I had, we were really just good friends. Like, we were good friends so to like each other was like the next like we kind of just fell into the like we didn't go into it like liking each other sincerely um it was something totally that just came about but um everything was really great and it was so it was so good that this kid was not even afraid of my dad and if you've seen my dad especially then my dad's like six two um, he's always been a really big guy. Literally, my dad's hand, I kid you not. And you've seen videos of me. If you haven't, look at them. I have a big head. My dad's whole hand will cover, like, literally my face. My face will, like, just fit in his hand. Like, it's just a uh, ball and glove. Like, so my dad's this big guy, right? And I will never forget one day. Um, I was just telling this story recently to my best friend about how I snuck and wore this little jean skirt that I had that my daddy had said, listen, you've outgrown that. You can't wear that anymore. And I put on this jean skirt because it was cute and I thought I was fly and I liked Jason, right? And um, anyways, one day after school, like a plum nut, knowing that my mom and daddy pick us up through the car circle, Jason showed up at the car circle and we were kissing. And um, I look up in the glass and there's my father's bright orange Dotson pulling through the car circle. I took off running because I was totally paranoid. Like, I'm like, my dad's gonna whip my butt. He's gonna kill this boy. So, I leave, but he stands there. And my dad comes up and he says, who are you? He goes, what are you doing kissing my daughter? You have no business kissing her. And he said, well, I'm her boyfriend. And my daddy said to him, she didn't tell me about no boyfriend. And this guy said, well, I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. Not only did my daddy not kill me or him, he said nothing to me about it. So this guy was like this person who stood up for me, right? Um, anyway, long story short, Jason and I were really good friends, boyfriend, girlfriend. And so we, we would ride our bikes home and sometimes we would go the same direction, but to go a certain direction was kind of out of the way. Um, but we would make um, 
accommodations or uh, for each other, right? And so one day I decided last minute, I said to my sister, you can go the other way if you want to, but I'm going to go this way today because I just want to see Jason. And I ride, I'm riding my bike, riding my bike, I'm pedaling that cruiser. And I come around the corner and Jason, while still on his bike, is leaning over to hug this girl who's on her bike. Immediately, I thought, oh, he's cheating. It's too, I knew it was too good to be true. And I decided I was going to break up with Jason. And I broke up with Jason. I never spoke to him again. We moved the next year. And I was angry with Jason for a long time. Well, fast forward to my sophomore year of high school. And guess who transfers to our school? Jason. Well, at that time, of course, I'm a little more mature. I'm not angry with Jason. We become really good friends again. And we're sitting in a class. We sat to get sit next to each other. We actually sat at the same table for science. He had a girlfriend. I had a boyfriend. Um, but we were just friends, right? He was, again, just that really great friend. And someone in the class turned around and said, hey, I don't know if you guys know, like, you like why are you guys do you guys not see what we see why are you guys not dating why are you guys not boyfriend or girlfriend and we both giggled and he said well we were and I said yeah we were and he goes and someone says well why did you guys break up he goes well I don't actually know and I was like oh you know you you absolutely know why we broke up he said it means for the life of me I've never been able to figure out why you broke up with me, refused to speak to me, and basically acted as though you hated me. And I said, dude, don't play. You know what you did. You just don't know I saw you. And he said, what are you talking about? So I go into telling him about how I, I went that day, and there he was hugging her. And he said, Vivian, I hugged her because it was her last day at the school, and I was telling her that I wished her well. Um, she was explaining to me why her family had to move and she was sad. He goes, I just leaned over while still on my bike and hugged her. And that thing went ding, ding, ding. He was still on his bike. He said, Vivian, first of all, if I wanted to cheat on you, I definitely wouldn't have been cheating on the same route that we ride, this, you know, ride our bikes on. He goes, I just wouldn't do that to you. He goes, I, I really, really liked you. He's like, I loved you. I really, really liked you. And um, I was like, whoa. But had I never, ever saw Jason again, I would have spent my whole life believing that the first, second little boy that I actually liked in my life and the one that I fell in love with, I would have thought that he had cheated on me. But he really, really didn't. Now that Jason and I get back together, no, we did not. We stayed really great friends. We got into some trouble in high school um, because our teacher was not the best. And, well, we just were good friends and we got in trouble together. Um, but I, I share that with you because... At that point, I had to examine myself and realize that, hey, you know what? You did not even communicate with him. You did not try to find out what was true. You did not try to find out what happened. And you didn't really examine what took place because you watched him. He hugged her. He got on his bike, him and his cousin, and they rode off. And she went in the opposite direction. And you failed to realize that that girl never returned to your school after that day. She literally never came back never ever came back all I thought about was I saw him hug her he cheated on me he's like other people other guys he lied like this other person lied so we have to be careful to not allow ourselves to be tainted or be so broken that we can never see the good in ourselves or in others so again, I is for introspection. I know that might sound like an innocent story of middle school um, crushes and love and all of that, but it taught me something about being able to communicate, to process things. Now, I'm not saying that at times you cannot cut off communication until you figure out where you are based on something that someone did and you it's okay to take time and space. And sometimes people do things to you that are so devastating, so abusive, so wrong, that you don't need to communicate with them. The best and safest thing is for you to walk away from that situation. But we have to be willing to take an introspective look and to discern whether this is one of those situations or if it is not. We've got to always be aware of what our current state is. We have to know um, where we are and be truthful about it. So 
Um, say, for instance, if um, I had stayed in that state that I was in after my divorce, I was angry, I was hurt, I was bitter, and I was broken. I didn't realize that I was so broken because I just went on and kept trying to push past and surviving because I had to. I had two children to take care of. My ex-husband, my soon-to-be ex-husband was um, incarcerated. We had lost home and cars and all of these things and I didn't have time to do anything but rebuild, push forward and keep a roof over these kids' heads and all of that. But I failed to, to do the introspection, the review, to really see where I was. I didn't discover it until I was in the midst of a situation, a relationship where someone was literally trying to love me and I couldn't accept it. Walked through that type of thing several times before I finally got to a place where I could say, you know what, Lord, I can accept what you have for me. I can accept that I'm worthy of love. I can accept that this person's view of marriage or their um, view of love, view of how um, they refuse to see my value really didn't affect my value or the worthiness of my heart to be loved and to receive the love that I was created to receive. This week, we are in section two of the shift and it is entitled Change Your Mind. We have the power to change our minds, which means that we can also change our brains. Our minds and our brains are different. Our brains are neuroplastic and with strategies and practice, we can actually change the neural pathways that our thoughts travel. Any lasting change takes time, but you are worth the investment. The investment of time and the investment of the work, like the work I talked about earlier that's taking place in the shift. To reroute, we must examine and be honest about what has and is causing us to be stuck. Then we must filter what we discover through the truth. The truth is who God says that we are. The truth is uh, the purpose that God has placed us in this earth for and to fulfill. Don't trip if your thoughts need to be rerouted. And if you find that the thoughts that need to be rerouted are, are more or greater in number than the thoughts that are good, because in the end, they're all gonna end up in that same pile or that same group of good thoughts. So it doesn't really matter how we got there. It matters where we end up. So your assignment for the next seven days, yep, I'm giving you an assignment. And you might think, hey, you're not my counselor or coach. Well, if you don't want the free um, assistance, then, well, for those of you who do, your assignment is to journal for the next seven days as you practice rerouting your thoughts. Take them, route them through truth, filter them through truth, create strategies in the process that can help you sustain this change in thoughts and make declarations daily over your life until what you are declaring is actually what you are seeing and walking through. Let's get unstuck together. Well, you have listened to the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. God bless you and have an amazingly wonderful remainder of your week. We'll see you here next time.